Welcome to XR Today. My name is David Dungay. We are here reporting live from Immerse Global Summit in the beautiful Madeira I'm with Pearly from HTC. How are you doing, Pearly? Fantastic. Can be better. Just came swimming with the whales and the dolphins. Really, it can be a better way to, to come together with other like-minded creators and pioneers and leaders in the industry and celebrate some um, important achievements that we've we've delivered together today, but also look deeply into the future with very thoughtful and intentions on how we're going to realize and unleash the full promise together. Fantastic. Well, let, let's talk about some of that future now. Sure. Uh, you know, there's been lots of conversations here this week. Uh, open standards. Um, there's been a lot of chatter around that. Why are open standards important? Uh, give us your view on that. Absolutely. If we're to make this metaverse a truly transformational technology that will democratize access to life-changing experiences for everybody to benefit all members of the society, then we've got to make sure that it's built on open standards, open protocols. So more participants come into the market and join, whether that's creators, as device manufacturers, that's that's brands that are looking to engage. If these building blocks are built on open protocols, then it's much easier for creators to monetize, for users to traverse between worlds seamlessly um, without holding us to our highest ideals of building an open ecosystem and platform, then we'll end up with very walled gardens. I think we know what that looks like from a lot of sci-fi dystopian descriptions. You know, there can be a lot of undesirable consequences and externalities that we might already you know, be well equipped to imagine. And so that's why imp it's important for the industry to have these conversations early on. So Metaverse uh, Standards Forum, for example, Kronos Group pioneering OpenXR. These are all very important initiatives and we need everybody to come behind them. And we've been very proud to support these initiatives since early days as fund founding members. We support OpenXR, WebXR, open protocols for avatars like VRM. And you'll see that that will be our core kind of philosophy and ethos in making sure that this is an open ecosystem for everybody. Fantastic. So um, this week's all been about uh, use cases. People have been talking about the here and now, what's what's ready to go and what's coming down the line as well. Uh, what are some of those important sort of VR use cases that you're seeing that you're most excited about? Absolutely. I think we all together have a great aspiration for what the metaverse can achieve. Of course, we're not there yet. We have a long way to go before technology pillars mature and all converge into a fantastic user experience. We're not there yet. So before that, it's so important for us critically to see through the hype and stay grounded and see where are the real time, real life value we can already deliver to people today, people and companies and their productivity and their well-being. And so some of our favorite use cases are, for example, in the enterprise space, in productivity, right? Training, simulation, there's really no better kinesthetic and natural learning platform and system than virtual reality. You can safely simulate any otherwise might be expensive, hazardous um, training. You can do so safely, effectively, co cost efficiently inside virtual reality. When you think about the transformation of the workforce for, for, for the coming decades, reskilling and upskilling, in virtual reality simulation and learning will play an incredible role. And it's not just about work, future of work. It's also for our children. I have three young girls. I can see how they're so natural with these technologies that give them incredible access to explore their curiosity, to become critical thinkers, problem solvers, and, and really be prepared to live in this, this new era where they must coexist with advanced technologies like AI, uh, how they can gain not just fluency, but imagination on where they can play a role to use, this, use these technologies to, to build a future. I think that's incredibly important. So we talked about just now the training collaboration, but also in the therapeutic space, anything that can deliver value today that's better in virtual reality should be implemented and delivered today, whether that's physical therapies that you're now doing in brick and mortar uh, clinics with very limited access. Now you can do it from the comfort of your home with the headset where clinicians can treat you remotely with advanced analytics. They can track your progress. It can increase your engagement, your adherence, and as a result, better patient outcome. Um, so these are some, just some of the real life examples. There is just so many more. Um, I think it really comes back to our vision of how when we bring the best of our humanity and hope for the future into the most cutting edge technology, we will unleash human imagination and contribute to society in a very positive way. Um, and there's tremendous passion, conviction in, in this idea. We just need to figure out how we implement in a very grounded way and delivering real value. And that can happen uh, unless we all support open system, open protocols and standards. 
Fantastic. Well, I can feel that passion coming through, Pearlie. So that's amazing. Uh, tell me about uh, more specifically around HTC, your portfolio, how that's expanding, how that ecosystem has been built out and uh, how you're helping bring some of this stuff to life. Absolutely. So you might know us traditionally from our award-winning devices, the Vive Pro, the Vive Flow immersive glasses, the Vive Focus 3 all-in-ones, um, amazing, amazing portfolio of products. Absolutely. But we are continue to innovate on sensing side of things, recently adding facial tracking trackers, eye trackers, to make sure that users can bring more of their natural interactions, expressions into virtual reality to enhance that connectedness and immersion inside virtual reality environment. Uh, but not just that, we're not just a device manufacturer anymore. We are building and advocating for Viverse, which is our version interpretation of what the open metaverse looks like. So it's built on open open XR, of course, but also web XR. So people can access via any connected browser they have on their smartphone, tablet, tablets, laptop, they don't necessarily need a VR device to access these incredible experiences that are built by the people using tools and infrastructure that, that we create, these open building blocks for creators, for companies to easily build worlds and incredible experiences where users can easily traverse between, right? That that concept of you like you go from one website to another within the next five, 10 years, you can imagine all of our digital interaction to come to life in three dimensional way. Um, and, and there's no way that we're going from wall garden to wall garden, right? Bring your digital assets and identity from one, one wall garden, centralized um, uh, garden to another. That would be just a very, very difficult user experience. And that's why we want to start implementing things like that now uh, with, with the WebXR, with the link, you can traverse to one world from to another where uh, data is built on the blockchain. So people's um, identity, digital assets, and creators on monetization and, and ownership of IP can, can all have a secure foundation to be built upon. Um, so, so you will see a lot more from us regarding Viverse, how we're empowering creators, empowering users. You'll also hear us hear from us very soon on what's coming in 2023 when it comes to expanding our portfolio of products, hardware, software, services, and content. And I very much look forward to sharing a lot more with everybody soon. Well, we, we look forward to hearing more about that in 2023 as well. Um, Pearly, look, that's all we've got time for. But thank you so much for joining me and sharing some of your insights. Thank you, David. Thank you, Chris. And thank you very much for watching. You've been watching me, David Dungay, on XR Today.